What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to my channel, where we share all things health, wellness, beauty, compassion, and whatever else comes to mind. Enjoy. What's up, you guys, and welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be talking about my hike that I recently went on in Seattle, Washington. For my hiking trip, I ended up taking my two-ton bag, and it has many compartments, and it can hold up to three liters of water. At the bottom of this bag, it has a rain fly in case you get caught in the rain and you can easily like put this over your bag to protect your bag and your stuff that's in here as well. I do advise on investing in a nice pair of hiking boots just because you want to make sure that you have something where it's going to give you support in your foot and also support around your ankle. That's the most important part if you're starting out as a hiker. But who am I to tell you what to do? Because I've only had two major hikes, but I just feel like I know what to do at this point, you know? Earlier in August, I ended up hiking Mailbox Peak, which was an eight hour round trip hike that gained 5,000 feet in elevation. Now, before going into this hike, I did not do any research. As with any hike, you should do research because you won't end up in the predicament that I ended up in. We ended up researching a little bit about this trip the night before, and we found out that it was best to take the new trail up instead of taking the old trail up, which was the route that we were going to originally take. The new trail was a little bit steady, and it wasn't so difficult compared to the old trail, which is straight climbing. It's like a vertical ascend for two hours. Before starting the trail, we ended up stopping by the grocery store to get a few things to keep us fueled and energized. And there were like things that we just wanted to make sure we had in our backpacks in case we needed to, you know, rehydrate or needed an extra boost on this trip. I did carb load three days in advance and I was drinking water like I supposed to. And I also did the stair step before this trip. So I honestly don't know what was going on. I think it's just the change in the terrain. Since I live in the South and this is a hike that you would take on the West Coast, it was a huge difference. And I think that was the main reason why I had a hard time. Getting to Mailbox P, you do have to climb over a ton of rocks, which is basically like stepping on the stair stepper. And after you get past the rocks, then you're going at a vertical ascent, and it's really difficult. I thought I was stopping at the bottom frequently. I was stopping closer towards the top more frequently than anything. But once you get there, it's a sight that you'll never forget. The mailbox itself, though, is another story. Everything in the mailbox is really sentimental. When I originally reached the top of Mailbox Peak, I thought I would be silly and leave a toothpick inside of the mailbox. My friends and I decided to write a beautiful note on a napkin and leave it in the mailbox as our token for this hike. We decided that we would title this letter, Dear 30-Year-Old Self. And this was more so a peace offering and stepping into the age of 30 and embracing all of the change and transformation that has taken place. I don't know about y'all, but turning 30 is a big deal. You see things in a different perspective than you would have if you were like 23 or 24. So. Having the opportunity to share this bond with a group of friends really meant a lot to me. And this is something that I will hold on forever. We have videos of us putting the letter into the mailbox and I'll insert it here or here. And you know what, you guys, if you're ever thinking about hiking, take somebody that you really love and that you really care about because that really changes how you view and how you perceive the trip. Every time that I've taken a hike with Nick, it has always been sentimental and we've always learned and discovered something about ourselves and we always take away the good and we leave the bad. Mailbox Peak offered 360 degree views. And to my surprise, everything was relatively clear considering the wildfires that were coming from Canada. It was nice. In the distance, I saw Mount Rainier and it was so gorgeous. Oh my After we spent an hour and a half up there taking pictures and getting videos and FaceTiming our loved ones, we decided that it was time to head back down. Going back down is difficult. And you know, for some reason, people never really talk about hiking down. The entire time, my toes were just curled to the front of my boots and they were jammed and I couldn't do anything about it. 
And after that, we had finally came to the end and we finished our journey of hiking Mailbox Peak. Once we got done hiking Mailbox Peak, later that night, we ended up going back to the hotel and we got some peace so that I will not tell y'all where to get it from because it was nasty and I was bamboozled out of $40. You know what? I'm going to put it down here in the chat so you guys can know where not to get the pizza from if ever you're staying in SeaTac. The next day after I hiked, I woke up and I didn't have any muscle soreness, but my friends did feel sore. For some reason, my soreness didn't happen until two days later. And I think it was more so DOMS. If you guys know what that is, it's like delayed muscle onset or delayed onset muscle soreness, I think. We ended up going to eat at Portridge Bay Cafe, which offered local and sustainable food. They had an open bar for pancakes where you can add toppings like granola, banana, nuts, whipped cream. I ended up getting the Buddha bowl and I think that had quinoa in it, turmeric rice or turmeric cauliflower, some chicken sausage, eggs, and sweet potatoes. After going to Portrait Bay Cafe, we went to the Space Needle, which was pretty cool. I think that if you aren't from Seattle, you should definitely go visit here. It kind of gives you like a slow 360 degree view of the city. And it's really great for nice photo ops. And they also have a bar and restaurant in there too. So you may want to check that out if you're ever around Seattle. After visiting the Space Needle, we ended up going to Pike Place, which is settled on nine acres of land, which offered eateries, tourist attractions, and shopping. While walking around Pike Place for a couple of hours, we stumbled upon the gumball wall, and that was pretty fascinating. After we left Pike Place, we ended up going to Joey's Bellevue for dinner, and I also ordered an apple pie with ice cream on top, and it was chef's kiss, it was so tasty. The next day, we were supposed to go on a hike to Mount Rainier, but because the weather was so unpredictable, we did not take the hike because let's be honest, who wants to go hike when it's cold and rainy? We want to go hike when it's bright and sunny and it's warm. So unfortunately, we did not take that hike, but we did go eat at a really nice brunch spot. And I'll also insert a video here for this as well. After visiting Seattle, my thoughts have changed on the state. Before I went, I was so gung-ho on moving there. That was the place that I wanted to call home. But now that I visited, my views have changed. I would not live there because I do not like the uncertainty of the weather. I'm a sun child. I have to be in the sun. The sun energizes me and that state just did not give it to me. So for that reason, I won't be going back. If there are people who live in Seattle and you guys feel differently, please tell me why. Please tell me what are some places that you've visited or what are some places that you would not go back to because it gives you the same feeling of how I feel towards Seattle. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Until next time, peace. That was good. That was good. Mm-hmm.